This should be fun! Family don't end with blood. I regret this already. Hello! Not an idiot! See ya! Lilu Dallas Multipass. Give him the bits! The bits! The bits! The things I do for love! I will never, ever turn my back on people who need me! Cartoon cartoons! This episode contains themes involving homophobia, LGBT topics, and mental health. Have fun! Welcome back. <laughs> to, why should I watch that? Why should I watch that? Why should I watch that? An advice show for the modern era. Wrong podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a show where we watch some stuff, uh, to waste some time on it, and then tell you whether or not that time was uh, put in the right spots or wasted. <laughs> Who are we? I'm Myra. I'm Sam. I'm Jay. Oh. What? No, no salt? No sarcasm? No. I'm never salty or sarcastic. I don't know. Don't what you're lie to our listeners. I would never lie. <laughs> I'm the most honest person on this podcast. Sam, I think you've been in the wrong room every time Jay says their name. Yeah. Because uh, he says Jay every time. Yeah. Where are you? I don't Who know where you? have you have the been. Mandela effect in action. <laughs> uh, so what are we talking about this week? Ooh, Ooh Yuri on Ice. Yuri on Ice. We were born to, to make, make history. history. The intro is so pretty. Born to make history. Okay. It's a good ass. It's a good ass uh, opening, though. Like, for real, real. Do we want to do first impressions first? Absolutely. Yeah, because you can. guys have never seen yeah. it. Myra literally forced this down their throat. No, incorrect. Incorrect. Sort of. Incorrect. Okay, no, no, no. This. You guys have been wanting to watch it. You just had not, not had the chance. There. There we go. Jay may have been intentionally avoiding it for reasons. I was intentionally I was intentionally avoiding this show because I was under the impression that it was queer baiting, which is something that Japan, especially the slice of life culture, is not averse to doing. Hmm. You know, like is it always the norm? No. Has it happened? Yeah. So I was kind of I was kind of just off put. I saw a couple people being like, "Yeah, no, queer bait," and I went disgusting. And I didn't make my own decisions. You know, like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen it now, and I was wrong. Um, I Personally, I'm a fan of... If I'm going to watch Slice of Life, there needs to be some kind of action or sport around it. And this was exactly that. Mm -hmm. And it was good. Um, I can definitely see why a lot of people like it as their comfort anime. Uh, so I'm perhaps the least well-versed in anime of the group. And, um, ah, the only- Eh, so nanda. Anime o mitaimasu ka? Mite nai yo? I don't fucking know. Um. <laughs> but. This slapped. I, I had heard good things. I had also heard, you know, the whole queer baiting thing. Um. But I was like, eh, I don't really watch anime, so I don't have to worry myself about that. Also, the fandom kind of scared me because the same people who latched onto this show were also in Homestuck. And Durarara. So I was... And Naruto. And, and I was scared of you. I was scared of you people. Um, I understand now why you did, though. And free. <laughs> Listen. I'm just, I'm, I'm just adding. <laughs> lots, of, lots of scary people. And Yawashi no, no pedal, whatever the biking one was. Um, it was it was really good. It was like I, yeah, definitely can understand why this is a comfort anime for a lot of people. And it's just it's a really pretty anime to watch. I I enjoyed the process of watching it. Myra, do you have any thoughts upon returning to this anime? I still love it. Okay. Although you have rights. Um. I had originally seen it dubbed. We did watch the dubbed. We watched the or sub. Subbed. We watched the sub. I'm sorry. Watching the sub opened my eyes to <laughs> some shit. Some shit. <laughs> we will discuss. <laughs> we will dis this okay. This is one of the reasons I like watching the sub over the dub because they make calls. The, I, l 
like I said, I know. Uh, they, the only major call that they made <laughs> was a really big call. I mean, I understand why they made it, though. <laughs> Everything okay. else, they kept the same. I'm glad that they did not diminish on Yuri and Victor's relationship. Yes, definitely. Okay, <laughs> so in the interest of time, I'm just going to read the back of the Blu-ray DVD that Myra has gifted me um, that I'm keeping. Huh? Forever. <laughs> Too late. You didn't. <laughs> I was here. I saw it. I ha- It happened. Yeah. You gave it to me and everything. I did? Yep. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. Can you keep the DVDs? I'll keep the Blu-rays? Actually, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> okay, no, I would want the box. That's the only thing I want. Um, I'm teasing anyway. All right. Um, so instead of reading off the episode summaries, seeing this, they're a little longer than the ones from Static Shock. I'm just going to read the back of the DVD and we're going to go with that. Cool? Cool. <laughs> After suffering a humiliating loss at the Grand Prix final, Japanese skater Yuri Kotsky is ready to hang up his skates forever. Taking time off the ice, he reevaluates his passion, only to go home without medals, confidence, or reason to return to the rink. That is until his idol, Viktor Nikiforov, appears with a surprising offer. He wants to coach Yuri. This news doesn't sit well with others in the skating world, and Yuri must prove that he's worthy of Victor's attention by facing Russia's rising star, Yuri Pletsky. With new routines and Victor's undying support, Yuri will discover more about himself and his feelings within. With Victor close by his side, Yuri will find the true meaning of victory. Are you going to you? <laughs> no, even the... St- <laughs> That's so queer! Everything about this is gay. <laughs> like, both in a... <laughs> gay and like a wow lgbt representation way it's the same vibe same vibe okay that's the summary um now on to you sam okay (laughs) nothing you're just you're just gazing longingly at the fucking dvd box it's really pretty it's a dvd box it's so pretty it's just their promotional material. It's so pretty. Anyway. I think uh, Sam might have an issue. Mm-hmm. Okay, first of all, fuck you. Uh, oh, I know I have a problem. Okay. So. Yuri, not with this. Not this. No, wait. Not with this anime. It's too late. You said words. I have a problem with mm-hmm. how beautiful it is because I want it to be real life and I want to be in it. I'm sorry, so it's what I said. Okay, so what I just heard is we're all quitting our day jobs and then going to learn how to be fancy ice skaters <laughs> so that we can find gay love on the ice. Yes! Wait. Well, you said it! <laughs> you signed up for this! Okay, are you telling me if some beautiful Russian lesbian uh, award-winning figure skater came up to you and said, my dear, I would love to teach you how to be an ice skater, you would Naked. not a little bit go... Yes. <laughs> See? I'm not denying it. I have a problem. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not a problem. That is the opposite with a, of it. A... With a small Cora in tow. <gasps> <laughs> no! I'm done for. Yeah, that's... <laughs> oh my god, I would die for that dog. I would die for Everyone that dog. would die for the okay, dog. Okay, let's get back on topic. So Yuri on ice. Uh, <laughs> it's a... S- <laughs> We're a little all over the place tonight, in case you can't tell. <laughs> I keep beating my hair. Oh my god. Get a hair tie. You have one on your finger. Okay. I think this is funny and I'm sharing it. So Yuri on Ice is a sports anime created by Seo... Where is it? Seo Yam... Seo Yamamoto. There we go. Sayo Yamamoto. Moto. <laughs> you fucked that shit up. Listen, I, I literally Jay told, it. like, I laughed at Jay for struggling because I was like, this is going to be me in literally 30 seconds. I love you anyways. Because it's going to be me in the next one. I mean, I'll say, I'll say I love you right now, but, like, when I edit this, it's not going to be true. <laughs> um, Mitsuro Kubo. Can you zoom in, please? Yes. Thank you. Created by Sayo Yamamoto and Mitsuro Kuto. Oh, wait. Mitsuro Kubo. Uh, that wasn't too far off from what I said. I no. didn't hear you. Oh. Um. 
Oh, I apologize. <laughs> and you kicked me in my bad That's, knee. I, oof. I don't know which one's which underneath the table. I know, um, that's not your fault. Directed by Seo Yamamoto. Uh, and Hun? Jun Shishido. Jun. Okay. Jun Fun Shishido. fact, Japanese is pronounced exactly how it looks. As an American. <laughs> no, I know. It's, it, as an American, it's fucking weird. The only... The only... Sayo Yamamoto Mitsuko Kubo uh-huh. Taro... He got that... that <laughs> Sorry, the Mexican came no, out. That was, it was great. <laughs> I was like, what a flavor. <laughs> so much spice. Umbayashi? Umebayashi. Umebayashi. Kaku Matsushiba? Taku Matsushiba. See, I'm getting them right. Yeah, you got this. Yeah, just read them exactly as they're said. There oh. might be a lot of words, a lot of letters, but it's, it, it is exact. The music slapped. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> uh, studio by M-A-P-P-A. Mappa. Licensed. Mappa? I don't know. So, <laughs> listen, some acronyms are... <laughs> Or said each letter. Uh-huh. Others uh-huh. are just licensed by C R U and C H Y. Country roll R. Fucking fuck oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so angry. Boy, that's... I had to. You opened the door. I just walked through it. It's just a bunch of letters. Yeah. Anyway, language is fake. Everything's an illusion. Um. Originally, original network, TV, Ash, Ashai? Ashai? Original networks, TV Asahi, BS Asahi, STS, NCC, Sun TV, ATX. Originally run from October 6, 2016 to December 1st, 2016. 20, 21st. 20, 21st. There's 12 episodes in total. Uh, we didn't watch the OVA. OVA? Um, I don't remember what it stands for, but it's basically like a, an omake. It's, um, the series is over, but you said you want more content, so we made a short for you. Oh. It Based has- off of the manga, Yuri on Ice, side story, Welcome to the Madness. Um, written by Mitsiro Kubo, published by Avex Group. Mm published um how is it wait what how is Someti- it? sometimes the manga okay so it's not based on the manga this time it's just a manga oh some series that are animes first they come out with the anime and the anime sells so well people want a hard copy, book of, copy it. of it so it's an adaptation okay so an adaptation into a manga published may 26th what i'm talking to jay yeah while well, i'm we do this all the time, Sam. <laughs> it's um, not loud enough to interrupt you. Published May 26, 2017. Uh, there's apparently an a- anime film, Yuri on Ice, the movie, Ice Adolescence. Uh, directed and written by Seo... Uh, Yamamoto and music by Taro Umbayashi Yashi Umbe. Taro Umebayashi um, Ume Ume Bayashi um, and Oh sorry my brain was like that's the one word that's all uh, and Taku Matsu Shiba. Matsushiba. Perfect. Um, studio. Uh, Mappa. <laughs> um, and it doesn't have any... Um... Fucking... Budget or box office. Uh, animes normally don't. Um... If they told us how much it made, then we would have to admit that the animators were underpaid for it. Oh, no. Yeah. 
We anyway. don't want that. Um. So yeah, Myra. Yes. It's your turn for fun facts. Don't look at me like that with the audacity that I have to like. How dare I say your name? It's not how dare you say my name. It's um. I'm a little. A little. So they haven't actually released the the release date for the tw- the um, Yuri on Ice movie. It's supposed to come out in twenty twenty one. So this se- sometime this year. Okay. But they haven't announced it. Um. I'm hoping that it's not like before Victor and Yuri meet, but we'll see. Jay has some thoughts. Yes. I see. So, as far as my fun facts, um, the location, obviously, where the sh- Yuri and um, is from, it's not a real place, but it's based on a real location where a ninja... Um, ninja temple? Temple. They is. called it Thank a ninja you. temple in the anime. Yes. Uh, so that it is, it is an actual place, but uh, the actual island, I mm-hmm. guess, they're on is not a real island. island. So a couple fun fix, fun fix, fun facts. There we, we went go. We picked some fa- some fix for you to check out that are fun. So we'll start with the South Park. Shout out! I mean, who can forget ice. Cartman on the ice? Cartman on ice. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Make a screen, a slash, cause I hit the- That's all I got. <laughs> so um. On episode 12, when JJ has a flashback of his uh, life, we get South Park. We get Eric. We get, um, I think, Kyle and Kenny are in there. We don't get Stan. No, it's Stan and uh, Kenny and um, Eric. We don't get Kyle. Yeah. Uh, Another fun little thing is they did draw in one of the more infamous... um, figure skaters for using animes in her uh, performances. Oh. Uh, her name is... What's her name? Eva... Evgania? Madav... Medvav... I know she's Russian. Oh, is she the Russian teacher for Yurio? No. Evgenia Medvedeva. She's... Um, she did a... Um, one of her more famous performances uh, as far as like an- that is connected to the anime world, she did a Sailor Moon uh, oh. free, which was actually really cool. I really enjoyed it. Mm. I watched it. She was like, really cute. Um, <laughs> but you see her in the background when they're doing the dance off. Mm-hmm. When, you know, he goes, be my, be my coach, Victor. Um, let's see here. Um, another one is, um, Victor's real life inspiration is John Car- Cameron Mitchell, which is a American actor and director. Hmm. Um, apparently, uh, Mitsu, Mitsuru, Google? I can't see it. Yeah, Mitsuro Kuro. Mitsuro Kuro, Kubo, Kubo, um, saw them, uh, saw him performing in Broadway, on Broadway, um, it inspired her to draw Victor, I guess. Um, obviously, History Maker was a song that they, the opening song, and it did so well that they actually remade the opening in 2007, uh, two years later in 2018. As um, because that song is just it bobs. It, this is a great song. Um, Otabix Teddy Bear, which is one of the ice skaters. I think he's the. If I'm not mistaken, he's the stone face that we saw just now in the video. Um, his teddy bear is. 
based on a figure skater that actually does carry a teddy bear like that. Oh. Um, Dennis Ten. And he actually does his teddy bears from Ted, the movie. Mm. So. What a pure bear. I know, right? So cute. Um, fun little other thing. This is not ba- This does not actually happen in the show, but who here does not like Steven Universe? I mean, it's a classic at this point. I know. Um, so when uh, Steven goes to the Renaissance Festival, in the background, uh, you see Yuri, Yurio, Victor, and Otavik in the background all hanging out. Oh. And then... Um, figure skater Johnny Weird um they used a lot of his interesting outfits um mm-hmm. or one of them when Victor uses the flower crown in yeah. one of his performances that's a reference to him because oh. he used it in one of his performances as well Sweet. um your new <laughs> also the um arrows black outfit that um Yuri wears also another reference to weird i like how his name is weird (laughs) johnny weird but he's you know he's become one of the he's i guess one of the american figure skaters that everybody knows and another last one is when jj's carrying the magazine of, of himself it's a reference to a figure skater named yusuru hanya who won both the 2014 World Champion and Olympics in the same year. And he had a, um, he was a national hero for Japan. So oh. they were referencing him on that. Mm. Oh, Yurio's obsession with leather print or leather patterns and prints and cats mm-hmm. were all because of his cat, Poya. Yep. Yeah. I mean, his, he was obsessed. It's, it's sort of bad. He's cat boy. But, like, in a pure way. Yeah. And, yeah, that's all I got for you. Nice. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously, another fun fact that I did know before watching this is um, they did have, I th- can't remember who the figure skater was, but it is a famous figure skater actually perform all of the um, choreographs that they did and he, per, he choreography? Perf- yeah he I did saw. he did all of them and he would change his movements based on the characters so that they, it was easier for them to um, actually draw them and they mimicked his movements so I love that if shit. he would mo- he would change his his uh, body language mm-hmm. based on who what character he was skating for that's I love that shit. It's That's, awesome. that is amazing. A and, testament to a good s- skater. Yeah, I mean, if you can change your body language for every person that you were skating for, because mm-hmm. he did every single one of those oh, guys. Oh, even Mark. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Okay, so I'm sorry. So it's some true. themes we got going on for this little slice of life sports anime. Pride, ambition, and identity, mental health, and LGBTQIA. Mostly G. I mean, (laughs) well, depending. depending. Yeah. Dependence on where you look. Yeah. Um, So let's just jump right on into it. Mm. Yuri on Ice. Yuri on Ice. Uh, I just started singing the wrong theme song. We were born to to make make history. history. Um, Okay. Uh, Okay. (laughs) So let's start with mental health because that's where we see we meet Yuri at his lowest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And I think it's really neat that Japan shows not like peak stability from a slice of life character. No. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, from the get go, you get anxiety, you get depression, you get mild eating disorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I personally, I really liked getting to see this um, shown in an anime because um, those of you who only like Japan for anime and don't know a lot about the actual, like, you know, life 
stuff over there might not be super aware of this. Um, Japan is worlds behind any other nation. Like, it, it, it follows the trend of the um, Asian countries, actually, where they just do not acknowledge that mental health is a thing. Like, it, if you think that America's mental health system is bad, Japan's is worse. To a point where if you try to apply to work there from overseas and you have taken an antidepressant at all in your life, they will just deny you. Because you're not mentally fit. Uh, it's, it, it, it is like walking into a different world. Um, actually, one of the main reasons they started working on their mental health thing is because of the Aokikahaka... F oh my god, I, I can't say the Japanese name right now because my tongue said no. Um, the, the suicide forest? Yeah. Aokika... Aokikahara? I'm, I'm fucking up. I, excuse me. Um, the, the suicide forest is one of the main reasons they started actually starting to work on their men start to work on Ugh, what starting the to fuck? work starting to work on their mental health. Yes. Um, so many people were actually going there to commit suicide or contemplate it that they were forced to take into account that this is an actual like pandemic to a degree that was mm -hmm. happening with them. And um they actually have a mental health facility on site at the park now. Oh wow. Oh that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean cuz that park just does not have good it right cuz yeah. it's it's such a beautiful place that the the thought process is I just want to be somewhere beautiful before I I it's die. It's not just yeah. that uh, because of the densely packed trees it actually there's no breeze whatsoever or sound. It's, uh, that's well, one of the it's eerily quiet. Mm -hmm. oh. That's you're actually not supposed to go off of the path because it's easy to get lost. It's it's super easy. Um, and there's guides that walk the paths partially to look out for anyone who's setting up a tent or, you know, seems to be lingering or coming in with a business suit, but also to make sure that tourists are staying on the paths. Because if you step off that path, there's no cell signal. Oh. And anyway, um, the fact that with their climate around how they feel about mental health as a society, mm -hmm. it's it was just really cool to get to see a representation of not the norm, you know? Like, they're allowing, they're kind of giving, they kind of give Yuri the Steven Universe treatment on, on almost. Like, he is allowed to have feelings that are negative, that impact him, that are not just washed, wished away by, you know, someone swooping him off his feet. Even after him and, um... Victor? Uh, yes? I thought you were struggling, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I got thrown. Um, even after him and Victor start, like, hanging out and stuff and it, getting to know each other, that does not make his mental anxiety and depression go away. Mm -hmm. it, it just, it doesn't go away because the right person walked into your life. And I think it was just a really pure rendition of it, especially coming from a country that doesn't have a lot of that representation already. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really excited to see if they start putting out more stuff like this because of its popularity. Right. I mean... Because this came out in 2016, mm -hmm. and I think hit America in 2017. And that's not too, too long ago. It's, no. But I I do appreciate the fact that they give Yuri a mild, unhealthy relationship with food. Because um, with so many performance sports and performance arts that are physically demanding you need to eat a you need to eat but your food your relationship with food is so deeply tied to what you do and who you are and how you look and that's how you look and how you perform is literally your job yeah that i i, w I did ballet for 15 years so i can't tell you how many classes and seminars that we had to go to to um to be like hey listen your weight is an important aspect of how you how well you can do in ballet but you also do need to eat and it mostly girls there were guys who attended the class of course but um they were like listen if your classmates start losing muscles in their arms and their thighs tell a teacher or try to talk to them because that's when, like, you're you're going to a point where you will do irreversible damage to your body. And, 
Like, they didn't give him anorexia, they gave him binge eating, but it's still... It, it added an element of realism that I appreciated. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I need to amend something. They didn't just legalize gay marriage, they reversed the ban on same-sex marriage. So I don't know if that necessarily means that same-sex marriage is by proxy legal now, or just not banned, but not supported by the state. It's no longer illegal to be married to your spouse. Hey. Yay. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Um. No, I, 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 I gotta admit, as far as an anime that, because I watched it probably about a year after it came out, so I didn't mm -hmm. watch it right when it came out. Uh, so I was able to, like, literally binge it. Because mm -hmm. I was like, ah! <laughs> this would have been the anime that would have pissed me off to wait every week to watch it. Oh, for sure! It would piss me off. I would have been like, no! But, um... I would have stopped watching. I would have waited, yeah. Yeah, so I'm glad I didn't... I, I bench watched it when I first watched it. But I, I really enjoyed the fact that you're right. It It didn't criticize him for having mental issues like his family was actually very supportive of it his mom and, and dad were great yeah his parents were very supportive his friends were like dude he, he has mental issues that's why we're here for him mm -hmm. they weren't like "Ooh, you eh, ooh, no we don't talk about that they were very much no um, that's just a thing for him that's a thing for him and we're here for him uh i mean i think and one of the oh go ahead Sorry. One of the major things that um, one of the scenes that you see it is when he starts getting really anxious because um, Yurio shows up and he thinks Victor is going to decide to be his coach instead of being with him. Um, he gets this anxiety and he decides he just disappears. Nobody but his parents are concerned. They're not like, he's not going to go off and hurt himself. Mm -hmm. And you end up finding Yuri on the ice skating. And his friends are like, he's very, when he gets anxious or has issues that he can't deal with, he'll come here to let it go. Mm -hmm. And we have these doors open for him 24-7 because we know it's something that he needs. And I really like the fact that they weren't like, you have mental issues so what go away mm -hmm. it was very much of he has mental issues yes and we're gonna support him however we can yeah i uh, and i think that that's where this anime really excels as far as their discussion of mental health is how the side characters react to it because mm -hmm. i mean your main characters can say whatever but your tone is very much set by the world you have them interact with and like you said, his his friends and family know his coping mechanisms enough to help give him the opportunities and stability that he needs. And the fact that his coaches and his previous trainers are like, yeah, we just leave his the ice skating rink, you know, unlocked for this one door that he can come and train. Or like his um, movement instructor, his ballet teacher, or whomever she is, he calls her up in the middle of the night and she's like, bruh, I'm already a little tipsy. What do you want? <laughs> and he's like, will you help me train? And she was like, yeah. all right, bitch, get your shoes. <laughs> and I really liked that. It, it helped add to the lightness of the anime. Because it's very much a light, happy, fluffy anime. Um, but yeah, well, I like the side characters. In the same vein as that... Um, Yes, the side characters also, like, the, I completely agree. The side characters really do help force that narrative into solidity. That was, ooh, that was a fractured sentence. <laughs> the, the side characters really help flesh out that portion of the world and how they interact with Yuri, and I appreciate it. In that same vein, though, um, the way that Victor learns about Yuri oh. and his coping mechanisms is one of the coolest like depictions I've ever seen in an anime because again he does have these issues he has anxiety he has depression and following Victor as he has to learn the the little nuances that make him that make Yuri able to like you know cope through stuff and his his methods for 
um, figuring out how to navigate the you know tumultuous sea of brain funk. Um, it, it's it's so cool because uh, there's there's one point later in the series where um, Yuri's having a moment and Victor's like, I think I know how to fix this, and he he tries to be mean about it. And Yuri's like, you bitch, all I needed you to do was be there for me, and you're trying to put me through a trial right now, and I'm about to break down on you. And Victor's like, I hear you, and I understand, and I'm correcting that, so please don't cry anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I understood, and I had forgotten. That I had forgotten that you're <laughs> fragile. My bad. I know now. <laughs> But the fact that he, he recovers from that mm -hmm. and actively takes a, a, a positive role for Yuri, not not the way that he himself would want, but the way that Yuri needs, I, I really like that. Good moment. Um, and I, I, don't, I gotta admit, I really like the fact that it wasn't just Yuri that had the issues. It wasn't just Yuri. I mean, you have um, you have Yurio who has these anger issues, who has these little maniacal anger issues and you see that they are sort of connected to his family history and he's just a side character and then you see um jj who we all agree had a pa mild panic attack when he realizes if he wins gold he's about to get married and he's only 19 and he's like <laughs> <laughs> and totally fails and so i like the fact that we get the insight of every single skater's mindset when they're on the ice. We get the mindset, we get to see their mindset. Like we have one skater that literally calculates how much every jump, how much every mistake is going to cost him in his final score. But then you have another skater who's literally having like a drama in his brain about how his ex-girlfriend dumped him. Sister. And you're a different no, one. Different oh. one. Oh, that's that's correct. Yes. That happens twice and it's very different. It's we'll get to we'll that. Get to the sister. <laughs> we'll get to the sister. Um but it's interesting that they didn't hold back or they didn't just go just the main character is going to be mm -hmm. the one that we're going to highlight these issues with. It they highlighted it for every single character because even Victor at one point you can see that he has depression because he was like I didn't know where to go from here. I, you, you saw that mental instability mm -hmm. that every single character had. It wasn't just Yuri. Yurio has been added to the Bakugo chat. Oh my God! Oh yes. No! <laughs> That's all. And yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna build off what Myra said. The the main the the side the main side characters cuz i mean you have your background characters which is like his his, his family coach his, his family you know those people sorry that was me no you're good i just wanted to make sure it wasn't like a being um but they really have such a diverse cast of mentally unwell <laughs> skaters and dude because we got Mark, I think it's Mark, who's hypersexual. Are you about to talk about jizz in your pants, dude? <laughs> no, I was going to dance around that shit. I was just going to say. in my pants. <laughs> Every rither freaking time he's on the ice. Ugh, it was just so can't. awkward. <laughs> Every time I was like, please get off the ice. Like, <laughs> so I was like, oh, cool, we can't. got this. We introduced him and he seems like normal. He's a little slow. <laughs> no, okay, like. I saw that little bit of stubble, and I went. <laughs> but you wanted to know more about him because of the cat. The cat. <laughs> you know, he's a little flirty, a little, a little weird. But you're like, all right, you're probably just gonna be, you know, standard weird. And then he gets on the ice, and he's like, I'm gonna win back, Victor, with my sexiness. <laughs> my oh. arrows is so much better than, than your, your arrows, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> But then you like everyone either wants to be with Victor or like have him be this father figure to him, and there is no in between, because even Yurio is all like. Honestly, there kind of is an in between. That in between being, I'm on my way to one or the other, and I'm not sure which one. Not where I'm gonna land. 
even Yurio is like, yeah? Dad, why'd you abandon me? For every every production, and or performance. And then, who else? I don't know. But the... I think the only one that doesn't want to be with him is JJ. That's because he's... JJ's the too token se- straight. No, he's too obsessed with himself that he can't even admit that he wants him as a father figure. Narcissism. He, he is Cartman. Oh my god! I, di- I didn't really you didn't put that together, I'm sorry. No, I did put it together, but I was like, no. No. And then I'm like, fucking shit. That is Cartman all grown up. That's scary. Mm-hmm. It's real scary. Um, he has so a yeah. girlfriend. Not anymore. Um, we're not getting into South Park shit right now. So yeah, I I really liked how they had the almost everyone have some type of mental instability, and it's portrayed not in this like super drastic, like I'm a, a totally unworthy person because I'm I have mental illness. It's I got this. I'm gonna work with it. I'm gonna work with it. I have my own coping me- mechanisms. Some of them are worse than others, but you know that, mm, eh. dude. Yeah. <sighs> this anime is one of those that I love. Animes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen. I hadn't noticed. Mood. Big you know, mood. I've seen variety of animes. I've seen, you know, gone from Evangelion, which Junior introduced me to, and mm-hmm. I love him for it. It's a very good anime. To Dragon Ball, to Dragon Ball Z, you know, One Piece, Sailor Moon, and if we're going to Piece of Life, we have Fruits Basket. So I've been in, like, every category of sp- per se. You, you have a sampling of the different types of animes. I'm not gonna say I'm an anime expert, because I am not. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say I'm an anime expert because people won't agree with my opinion. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not Hunter gonna say. Hunter sucked. Oh, you you said some words. So I don't... Dragon Ball Z. I I didn't. Okay, care Dragon, for Ball, Dragon Ball, Z. Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z was way too much fucking filler, and it pissed me off. Look, I've... if I can come back on one episode and he's saying Kame, and I can come back on the other episode and he's saying Hame, and it's not just a meme; it's an actual like thing. We have an issue. Yeah. No. I tried to watch it. It's boring. The issue was... Look, I'm just going to touch it real quick. The issue with Dragon Ball Z is you start with freaking Goku on Snake Row. 30 episodes later, he's only made it a mile. Yep. And that... It, it's the Yeah, it's the same thing that Naruto did. Well, Naruto no. based it off them. And also, oh. not really. But No. I, listen, but, I don't know either, really. I just know that they take... They have too much filler. Oh, what? I'm teasing. Uh, Dragon Balls wasn't filler. It was poorly written and poorly paced. Oh. Yes, it was. It was Naruto in the middle of their production had oh almost 350 episodes of filler because they were so close to the the manga they physically could not keep putting the anime out. But it was making too much money for the studio to warrant having a gap in production. Hmm. And Dra- that's how you get Naruto with a monkey strap to his back delivering a pizza as a whole episode premise. <laughs> Yeah. That's not a meme. That's not, not a, meme. a meme. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so... I thought that was a meme! It's not a meme! I went, huh, I that's watched, weird. I, I watched the episode, and I went, I think I'm done for a little while, until everything catches back up. Yeah, no, I, I, I gotta admit, it to go from something like that, because I, I gotta admit, I was the 90s kid that was watching anime before anime was cool to be watched. You have rights. Um... So, to when I found Yuri on ice, I was it was really nice to to have that piece of life anime, but still feel like you getting everything. Yeah. Like it's a weird way to say this, but it's you're getting you're getting like an exciting because you. I mean, we got into it. We were like, "Oh, he hit the ice. Oh, he missed that turn." And you get this intense feeling, like, "Oh my God, is he gonna make the flip? Is he gonna make the flip?" And you get that that excitement mm-hmm. from you that you get from sport animes, mm-hmm. and yet you have this calm, soothing feeling that you get from ice skating, 
which is very weird and intriguing. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I forgot the thought I was going for. So go. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. No, I was going with the thought, and if it comes back, I'll okay. Remember it. If it comes back, let me know. So, um, my favorite thing about sports animes nowadays, because they were not always like this, is they have this ability to balance um, stress in a way that shonens can't. Shonens are uh, action animes, mangas, whatever you want to call them. Um, they, as set, they, they, their entire stressor hinders on mortal peril. Someone has to be in threat of life or limb or something other, something extremely serious, okay? So the only way for you to tease your uh, audience with a potential threat is by putting the main character and their friends in harm's way. But because they are the main cast, there will always be fan favorites that live. Everyone tries to say Attack on Titan didn't do that. They did, and you know it. Um, if the characters are doing oh, they well, do. they will not be written out. Um, the, the point of this is, the sports animes that are coming out nowadays, and by nowadays I mean the past like five years, um, they have this ability to do mortal peril on a smaller scale with no, with no risk. Mm -hmm. You get the same tension that you would get waiting to see if your, um, if your main character does the thing they need to do or not with the possibility of failure right there. Mm -hmm. There is nothing stopping them. Throughout this entire, like, anime, the, the person who might not be super familiar with how, how uh, sports animes have been written nowadays will be thinking he'll be getting gold by the end of the thing. But that's not what happens. He does not get gold. We see him lose. Yep. We see him lose a lot. A lot. And that is something that shonens cannot do. And I love that sports animes have kind of started to fill this gap. Um, and, and are, like, trying to put some kind of excitement back in without having to have their characters potentially die. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, or mortally injured. Yeah, there's another anime that we're going to be doing later this month. I will not say the name, but it is another good example of this. And I, it's just, it's just such a cool concept. And I love that we did want a, a sports anime first mm -hmm. because it really exemplifies how well uh, the storytelling has progressed for for the sports anime medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's so cool to actually be worried. Yeah, I. This was oh my. my um, my first sports anime. The only other slice of life anime that I had watched before this was Oron High School Host Club. L don't fucking snort we at got, me, We sir. love that shit, so we shut up. We love that show. I just, you said the only one, and I went, oh, I only. <laughs> I forgot Oren when I was saying all the animes I've seen. <laughs> it's a good. This is, why I this is why I have a My Anime List account. I don't know all of them. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Off the top of my head. There's there's a lot of them out there. I I've only barely dipped my my foot in the water, um, I but I I enjoyed the process of watching Yuri so much more because of the tension that Jay had mentioned. Because I mean, yeah, it's cute. It's fluff. Or in high school is cute it's cute. Fluff. It's fluffy, dramatic as hell, but. You see Yuri literally slam his face into into the wall of the ring, Ooh, yeah. and you see a little mm -hmm. spurt of blood. Yeah, and I thought he was gonna be like down for the count, but he's not. He like he gets back up. He he keeps going, but there's this there's this element of tension, like Jay said, that it's just really hard to get in an action medium. Yes. Yes. And it, like, you, s the animators did such a good job because there are so many moments where they, like, close in on, on their, their foot and you see their ankle wiggle. And for those of you who, ha who aren't, like, super into, like, dance or figure skating or anything like that, ankle wiggling is so bad. <gasps> Ooh, that means, like, they're about to fall or something's mm -hmm. gonna break. But then, but then he keeps going. He keeps skating, and you're like, "Oh!" And it's, 
it's just really good little details like that throughout the show help cement the the tension and because I was like oh you know sports animes how how exciting could it be pretty exciting (laughs) (laughs) pretty exciting no but beating off of Sam Mm -hmm. what you said I when we were watching the figure skating portions of the the Show. show it I agree with you. There's this tension that you're sitting there at the edge of your seat going, is he going to make it? Are mm-hmm. they going to make it? And it feels like if any of you out there listening enjoy sports, whatever your sport of choice may be, mm-hmm. may it be soccer, football, baseball, basketball, whatever. There's an anime figure for Figure skating. No, I, I wasn't talking about there's an anim- anime for for it this anime has you at the edge of your seat like you're watching the fucking world cup and you're like go go i need you to make a goal right now and then your favorite like player just straight up falls on the ground and you're like oh shit we lost oh shit we lost and then all of a sudden you have a twist of luck but you still lost and you Mm -hmm. still feel this defeat but at the same time you're not like defeated like i'm gonna come back to haunt you feel and that holds true for every character that you come across even jj who every interaction you see with him on screen everyone's like fuck you jj go away no one likes you like the entire crowd is at a restaurant our main cast all the figure skaters they're they're enjoying you know uh, uh yuri and victor's engagement and they're like, oh, yeah, you're finally married. They're like, no, 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 this is just an engagement, but thanks. <laughs> and JJ shows up, and he's like, hey, what's good? And everyone's like, mm, gee, we have, oh, look at, look at look my at wrist, I gotta time. go. <laughs> <laughs> but then he literally has a panic attack in the middle of performing for their, their final competition of the season. And he isn't making his jumps. He isn't making his spins. He is supposed to be doing like quads and triples and he's doing singles and doubles and that's no good especially at his level and he gets placed at like sixth or something like bottom of the bracket. He was last. And like you can't help but feel a little sorry for the guy. He... He's just, like, you're like, oh, man, like, you're a dick for sure, but, oh, no. Mm. You need a, do you want some tea? Maybe a hug? I know. <laughs> like, are you doing okay, bud? And that's such good writing. If you, if the character you have been hating all season fails and you still feel sorry for the guy a little bit, uh, that's, that's good writing. This is another thing I wanted to talk about for the genre. And also expanding from the genre. Um, A lot of uh, sports animes that have come out uh, recently, um, I'm going to say Free, even though I don't really necessarily agree with it. Uh, it, Free was kind of like a starter. uh, But Haikyuu, Yuri, um, there's probably more I haven't seen yet, but those are the ones that come to mind immediately. They've really embraced this, this formula as well where they flesh out the other team. They flesh out the competitors. And uh, the first main major anime that we've uh, seen like actually also ad- adapted is My Hero. They, yeah. they did a really good job taking that idea and fleshing out the other schools, fleshing out the, the, the League of Villains. Uh, everyone, on that, everyone in that show is so fleshed out to an, to an obnoxious level, okay? Mm-hmm. And doing that makes the stakes on all sides higher. And I love that we've started doing that as like a as like a, a base point for mm-hmm. like better like you know good writing. Pre- yeah, that's the word. Um Yuri really uh, exemplifies that because like y'all were saying, whenever one of the competitors gets on the ice, they start skating and we we already know so much about them from how we've seen them on the at the Kiss and Skate, is that what it's called? What? The the border? Oh yeah, 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 kiss yeah. and skate. Yeah, uh, we that we see them, we see them uh, like their their reactions at the kiss and skate. We see them interacting with their um with with their coaches. 
depending on who they are in the cast, we've seen them interact with our, like, main characters mm -hmm. in different ways. Um, even the ways that they're tied to Victor come into play in flushing them out as people. And it makes, uh, I think, in, in, the, in the main race at the end, the one kid that was, like, really excited for Yuri to compete... I love that like, kid! That little kid. I Okay, I love the way that they developed him in the original race, that, in the original competition that he was in, and then to have him go home and cheer for Yuri at Yuri's mom's restaurant <laughs> Yes, was such a, a good tie around. Because, yeah, he lost, but he's not forgotten. He still exists in this world, and he still has a friendly relationship with Yuri, so he's going to want to try and support him. It, it, small stuff like that seems so, like, dumb when you, like, are, are probably writing stuff out. Like, no one's going to care about this. I'll think about it, but no one else will care. It's It fleshes stuff out in the background, and that's the best way to do it. And it's, it's great because that little kid, Yuri's not necessarily the kindest to him. He's not malicious towards him, but he's not you know, like, super friendly with him either. I don't think he knows how to interact with him. He's yeah. never yeah. been looked up to before. He's never been looked up to before. And so this kid being like, oh my gosh, Yuri, you're my hero. And he's like, ew. Please reconsider. Please reconsider. There's Victor right here. Like, he, he, has, he has the stereotypical millennial reaction of, are you sure about that? Are, are you sure? <laughs> I think you, he's like, you're, you're mistaken. Like, I saw you, I saw you perform at this, at this, uh, competition. Ha! Ah. <laughs> and then... He sees the kid perform, and then he goes to perform, and the kid's cheering for him from from the kissing skate, and he goes, "Wait, oh shit, I have impact! What the mm -hmm. fuck?" <laughs> and then he proceeds to change his behavior from that as well, which is such a good little moment. Like mm -hmm. he realizes that he doesn't live in a bubble, like so many of us think we do, and he's like, "Oh, I can." have a positive impact even if I'm going through a whole bunch of anxiety and depression in in my own head oh let me let me let me be what Victor was for me and and he actually takes it to another level in that because Victor never even though Yuri has always looked up to Victor mm -hmm. he's never had that interaction with Victor until Victor became his coach where Victor was cheering for him. Mm -hmm. At that moment, he's like, I can do something, make a difference. And he starts cheering for him. And he doesn't just, like, clap in the background and nothing. He straight up yeah. makes sure he hears him scream that he is excitedly cheering for him. Doesn't he give him a rose as well? Uh, One of the roses that he gets probably, I think. thrown? I, I think he gives him a rose. But I know for sure that when he's about to perform, he he's, he looks over at Yuri. Like, before he gets on the, the ice, he was looking for reassurance. And Yuri was so self-focused on mm -hmm. himself at that moment. He doesn't give it. And he realizes his mistake and goes to the kiss... kiss Next. What is it called? The kiss and skate, Kiss and skate? Kiss and skate? Kiss and skate kiss and skate it's like a kiss and fly or a kiss and drive okay um and he goes up to it and he makes sure he hears him and goes good luck mm -hmm. you know he makes sure he knows that he is cheering and watching um which for it, the second performance for the second performance which is a different level that he, of support that he didn't get from victor to begin with and maybe it's something he was looking for maybe that's a good point. Maybe. Um, on that note, can we talk about Victor? <laughs> I would love to. Because but... the one thing that I love about this show is that um, all of the characters have flaws. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Even this perfect pinnacle of what Yuri sees to be the ideal skater, Victor, that boy just... He just walks around going, hey, I promise you this. I promise you this. I'm just going to make as many promises as I can. I did what now? I, you, I promised what? I promised this? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? He's also... Hypersexual? I mean, mm, nah. Well. He's never been a coach before. And... I don't know. Personally, I was like, 
you got this, BB, you go. But, like, watching the way that he interacted with um, Yuri after, right after the skates, it kind of showed his um, flaws, I guess, in that regard. Not that he was a bad coach, but just that he definitely... Inexperienced? Had, yes, he was very inexperienced. Uh, in, in my training... In my, like, you know, work training uh, experience, when you have a newbie, or not even just a newbie, just someone who needs to be coached, and you just word vomit on them after the stressful period, it doesn't stick or help. Mm -hmm. If anything, it just makes them go, oh, so I did fuck up, and you did notice. Cool, so everyone else noticed, too. Awesome. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna internalize that until we get past it. Like, uh, it, it, little stuff like that. I like that they kind of put that in to show that he was still learning mm -hmm. and still, you know, growing. Yeah, because he does that right after his first uh, competitive performance. Mm -hmm. And he's all like, you did X, Y, and Z wrong, and, like, this is how you can fix it, and this is what you need to do. The poor boy's face was just like, I did what? <laughs> <laughs> but, sir... And, and then he goes, TV. I told you to spot this, and you didn't spot it, and you didn't do that. And, you, it, and Yuri's just, like, shell-shocked. Yuri's just like, oh... Ah, that exact sound effect. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then, as the show progresses, Victor learns how best to reinforce the good things in his life and the performance, and how to give him positive reinforcement throughout the show. And that ends up being, you know, <laughs> hugging and kissing. I, I just, I want to point something out real quick. The tr okay, so I guess the main reason he doesn't strike me as someone who's grown as a good coach, quote unquote, he didn't learn how to be a good coach. He learned how to turn his protege into a boyfriend. Yes, he did. <laughs> if he if he were to take that experience to another person, the only option would be I'm gonna have to train him so that I can date him. That's. Not You've written yourself into a box, my dude. <laughs> no, it's true, because... The way that he interacts <sighs> with Yuri throughout their training is specifically from a mindset of, I care about you more than I probably should. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that fucks up every step of the way that he tries to train him. Sometimes he cares too much, sometimes he cares in the wrong ways, but either way, Yuri's feelings are at the very tip-top, and that's not always the best thing for a coach. No. No. And oh. even Victor's feelings, like, he starts realizing he, you start noticing that Victor's like, well, let me explore these feelings mm -hmm. I have for you. In, in the very in aspect of, like, a... not a very healthy. Not very healthy and not necessarily constructive manner. No. Because, I mean, listen, grabbing your um, protege, your trainee, by the wrist whilst naked and going, how do you want me to train you? Okay, again, we <laughs> talked about this during the show. They were in a hot springs and Japan's different and weird with nakedness. So, like, that that but, scene. But okay, also but Victor's the Russian. He, but the scene yes, when he's he in Japan. But the scene when he grabs his wrist and goes, imagine yourself naked on the ice. He, see? see? That, that part. That's where we started pushing the line. <laughs> also, he, he hugs... Yuri and, from behind and goes, seduce me with your skating. And he goes... Okay, but he did. <laughs> he did! He did. And, it was a good moment, but like... Yeah, because he even goes... not a professional way to motivate your like, skater! Okay, what, what would they have done if fucking the other Yuri, Yurio, what if, what if he had gotten arrows? Okay, the whole show would be different! That would be... But I don't think Victor would do that for him. Th I think Victor wouldn't... Talking about that. I don't think Victor would have done that because of their personalities. He was trying to get them out of their box. Because even before he before he gave them the assignment, before they even knew what the heck they were dancing to, Victor said, I want to surprise the audience. That's something I've always wanted to do. Doing something that is normal for me is not what I like. I like to surprise the audience. And I think that's why he became, he even says that's why he decided to coach Yuri, because it's something unexpected for him. Right. Mm -hmm. He had just won gold. Everyone expected him to keep going as far as, like, figure skating. And he's like, mm -hmm. and then he's like, I think I'm gonna be a coach now. But I don't know how to coach, but I'm gonna be a coach What if after now? getting seduced by this little Japanese boy while super drunk? Oh my god. <laughs> and 
I love that they put that in at the end. They were like, hey, so in case you weren't aware, um, they knew each other. <laughs> oh, you're, you don't remember? No. I don't cute, want to. Cute to pictures. montage of Yuri like, getting absolutely smashed. It reminded me of that one episode of Spongebob where Patrick had the box and Spongebob was convinced there were pictures from him at a party yes. in the box. Yes. Except now it's just a couple of gays on the ice with the phones. With phones. No, and it's it was the pole dancing. Oh, the pole dancing. The the uh, fact that Yurio and Yuri had a whole co- dance competition and Victor jumped in in the middle of that and was like, "Oh, what am in this?" <laughs> hey, what's up? What's good? I think to me that was like a beautiful way of saying this. This battle between Yuri and Yurio. Has been going on. Has been going on since before <laughs> they went to Japan. <laughs> also, you know what I just realized? What? Yuri was 15. He couldn't get drunk. So all he knew <laughs> is this fucking Japanese boy waddled up to him and was like, Dance, bitch! And he went, I will! <gasps> oh! No! God, I love Yuri so much. He's so angry. I He's love He's so it. angry! <laughs> Dude, he's so angry and obsessed with cats. It's perfect. It's perfect. I know. He's Cause... just me in middle school. <laughs> you didn't have to read yourself. I mean, it's it's true. I don't... I just love the fact that they... You know, you see those little snippets, and then they end that whole sequence with a video of Yuri literally, like, air-humping Victor. Grinding going, up on Victor. Going, be my coach, please. Please. If I win, what is he? No, no, what is he? I think he said, if I, um, we have a hot spring. If you win gold, do you want to be my coach? Yeah, something like that. Oh, my God. And Victor's like, yeah, I promise I'll be your coach. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, I promise. It's the only promise he actually keeps, though. I have a theory. I don't think he actually meant to keep it. I think the video that went viral of Yuri dancing, or uh, skating, made him remember the promise. <laughs> Like, and then he went, well, I'm bored anyway. Well, <laughs> I'm depressed and bored. Let's go I seduce have, a Japanese man. I have a theory on that, too. Uh-huh. I do think he forgot the promise. hmm Because I, I think he didn't think Yuri was going to remember. And watching the video, he probably saw a passion in Yuri skating that he was missing in himself. I just think it's, I, I, I have this mental image in my head of him showing up at the hot spring to tell Yuri, to tell Yuri that he's going to teach him and just being like, I can't wait to have a cool new passionate student to be my ki- my student. And then the door opens and it's Yuri. And he goes, even better. I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I also, I mean, I also love their little gay relationship. I'm sorry. No, it's that is the Oh, cute... that's... That's her. Yeah, go ahead. It's the cutest little freaking thing. I just love that not... From the get-go of this show, you're... you're. They're set up to be romantically involved. I wouldn't say they're set up to be romantic. But... They're, they're set up with a potential. They're okay, a potential. The, okay. the potential. The potential. We both fucked up. There we go, Griffin. I was wondering when you'd make a cameo. <laughs> like, I was... I've been hiding. See... Um, for me, um, I really kind of had canon Yuri as um, demisexual, which is a subsect of asexuality, which basically just means you're basically asexual, but that one person, that one person that you happen to know real good, that one person, hmm, hmm. interesting. <laughs> I had canon him as, as demi, and I had canon um, Victor, Victor as, as pan. Just a fucking mess. He's like, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, I mean, I, you really get that vibe with him and Chris. Oh yeah, no, we we talked about this. We were like, but also he's a wo- he has he has fucking Tamaki vibes from Orin High School. Yes. Yeah, he does. And I, I'm done. Th- I mean, that's something we talked about while we were watching the show. Is that he feels like he's had a white night stand with almost everybody <laughs> in that fucking skating like at least. Mo- probably a few times. Uh-huh. And everybody's like, wait a goddamn second, what does Yuri have that we don't have that you've been sticking around? They literally, they come up, the minute 
Yuri comes back to the uh, competitive figure skating, they all swarm him and they're like, well, aren't you just a cute mm. little thing? What, what What's going on there? And he's like, I'm sorry. What? He's like, well, my, my, my ice skating hero came into my little town and told me he would teach me stuff. So now I'm here. And they're like, he taught you stuff. Well, yeah. We and had the ice skating rink all to ourselves for practice and he taught me a lot of stuff. That's not the response I expected. But, um, no, I like I like that it wasn't your typical queer baiting. I guess, but even for animes, you really don't see that. Um, I guess so, slow burnish kind of over time. He, not just slow burnish, but even um, it the slow burn with this intensity of somehow still jealousy, but not jealousy. Because you see, Yuri does get jealous at some points that Victor gets all this attention from other people. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, you're supposed to be mine. But at the same time, he's not like that aggressive jealousy where you're like, "Uh, oh, that's cute. You don't see that aggressive jealousy, that possessive jealousy. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. But you also see that Victor starts noticing people are noticing Yuri and he's like, I don't like this. Mm. What is this feeling? My risk was calculated, but boy, did I underestimate that. (laughs) Am I bad at math? And I was avoiding that, but thank you. And I I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. And it wasn't just Yuri and Victor. In watching this show, I have learned that ice skaters are inherently good at math, so I couldn't say it. Oh, well. Yeah. (laughs) Go ahead. I, I, um... I gotta admit, I really enjoyed that aspect. I love the love story. I love the potential for love stories to continue. Mm -hmm. You you see other couples sort of start forming without really forming yet. And it's it it was really fun. Um I also really enjoyed I mean the comedy in this whole thing. Yeah. You have so and I know you guys didn't like the whole I came in my pants, but I just thought it was fucking hilarious. It was funny the first time. Okay, it, yeah. Let me, let me ta- rephrase. Every time you kept doing it, it just got weird. After, like, the third time, I was like, bruh, go After to the therapy. Third time, I, I, I wasn't even, like, go to therapy. I was like, I'm gonna call the, I'm just gonna call the cops at this point. Yeah, he's There like, are underage children here, my good sir. And I mean, <laughs> I enjoyed that guy who's, like, totally in his head having this sleeping beauty d- drama. And you're like, that was so fucking was- much. He that was, was like, so extra. He was extra. Like, he was Russian. I, okay, so um, there's this old trope in older um, sports animes, specifically Prince of Tennis, where um, the the performers, the people doing the sport or whatever it may be, are put into this like um, this fake kind of. What, there's a word for it. It's like a um, a symbol, a symbolic representation of their fight. In, in specifically in Prince of Tennis, there's one. Okay, so uh, the long story short of the Prince of Tennis, de, de, how tennis destroyed the dinosaurs thing, you can look this up on YouTube. It is worth the minute <laughs> that it is. Um, the the this the symbolic representation of this dude hitting a real good shot of tennis is culminated into this cinematic masterpiece of how tennis somehow created the universe and then destroyed the dinosaurs, <laughs> and then it just ends with the dude like fucking. He, he lost. Knees. And I feel like that guy, the the one who was doing the whole play in his head, was a direct callback to that old style that of storytelling for sports animes. Because th- this is not just a Prince of Tennis thing. Every sports anime used to do this shit where it was like, oh, look, I'm going to tell it in a and story. It, it sort of make it more, to make it more dramatic. And even visually though appealing. Not, I like the fact that you're probably right that they, they were touching on that that feel of intensity mm-hmm. yeah and because, almost almost over drum over dramatics yeah because i mean just the little bit that you showed us of that you can feel that that impending doom mm-hmm. that you you get with um the other animes that sense of it's a life or death situation mm-hmm. when it really it was a ball that was out of bounds yeah and yeah i like that uh I like that it kind of plays off of how we kind of handle 
um, sports animes now, they're a lot more focused on the internal dialogue. mechanisms and dialogue of the people and sometimes even the coaches and stuff instead of focusing on showing off what an animator can do yeah. to... Um, oh, what's the word? It starts with an M. Where you say Monologue? The, no, where you, where you compare one thing to another, but it's over-dramatized. Metaphor. Metaphor. Where you metaphorically uh, represent what they're doing to an exponential degree. That, that was just one of a million examples I could have given. Like, it's... I, I really do like that callback, but I also like that we got a balance of it. Because mm -hmm. there was another character who had something similar where he was like a thief or something. But uh, there's a balance between that and the more analytical, like the guy who was counting in his head. Um, Yuri, how he's thinking of more cutlet bowls. <laughs> um, yeah. I, like, I like that it kind of gave a balance of it really just depends on the person. And not everyone needs this overdramatic story with all this cinematography and stuff to to get to the end of the dance. Mm -hmm. It's it's up to the person. Yes. And I, I like that a lot. We don't always need the symbolism anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. I think I really enjoyed the fact that they they did have callbacks to different types of animes. I love the fact that they they did take the time to actually study ice skating. Yes. Like they didn't oh, just yes. make the shit up. You know what I mean? Like, they actually took the time to go, we need to get an actual figure skater in here, show us the move so we can um, animate it properly. Right. And it, the fact that they took that time to actually animate it was great. Wasn't it you that pointed out that um, they're not supposed to have lyrics in their songs? Yeah. That's... Mm, I... I agree that they did a lot of technical research as far as the actual ice skating goes. I feel like if that's a, if that's a role that's like super insistent upon, the ice skater they had probably should have mentioned it. Yeah. But I get the feeling that maybe they thought that the only big thing about ice skating was learning the general rules and watching the guys skate and kind of just didn't even bother to look at if there were rules for the songs. Yeah, because I'm pretty... It might be just the short show. I can't remember. I I was pretty sure that... If I'm not mistaken... I mean, we, we can... We have Google. I'm just going to... We can Google it. Because mm -hmm. that might... I might be wrong on that. But I thought that they they couldn't have... Or they can't have a certain amount of lyrics. And mm -hmm. it's like one of the... It's like um, their song has to be a certain length. Especially for the free song. And then... um. That length also has to be, like, you can't start, be it's like gymnastics, you can't start before the show, the song, and you can't end before the song. Yeah. I do know that. There we what go. What are the rules? And this, we're, we're looking up an article now, but we're also going to preface with, this is um, a US-based article from 2018, and the uh, rules overseas may be different. Since Olympic began... Uh, however, uh, so at the beginning of the introduction to Olympic, this is, I'm going to preface this, this is Olympic rules. Um, it was only classical non-lyrical music could be used. However, when Pyeongchang, Pyeongchang in the Winter Olympics uh, will feature new rules, which allow music to be played in the routines. 2014, the International Skating Union announced that they would allow music with lyrics to play d during figure skating competitions. The decision was ultimately reached in 2012, but the union decided not to let the change take effect unto, until Sochi Winter Olympics had finished. Nice. Um, so yeah, that's a newer rule um, So that is allowed, and since it was written in 2016. The, so it was two years after the rule. So, yeah. I, they, again, they, they might have already been kind of pushing for it at that point anyway. Yeah. It's not like they were competing in Olympics either. So th this might have been a rule outside of Olympia that eventually changed Olympia. That's true. Yeah, this... I, again, I the only figure skating I have ever seen is Olympic figure skating. No, that's fair. And, and uh, you know, um, more than me. 
qualifiers for the Olympics. So I really, a lot of people still to this day do not put lyrics, but a lot of them have started putting lyrics onto or, their, or small amount yeah. of lyrics. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's fair. I, I, a lot of the cast that we see in the anime are younger people. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if they've grown up mostly ice skating to classical music, getting to choose their own uh, compositions for the first time, they probably went, are you going to let me do words? Okay, cool, because I'm doing words then. Yeah. Right. I mean, I you saw it with JJ, because JJ ended up, like, his whole All thing. The it was his own band. Song. His it, own band. <laughs> his own theme song. But everybody loved it. Yes. Can I say a thing that's kind of off the vibe? Yeah. Um, during this whole anime, I was so worried that something terrible was going to happen to Yuri. Like, listen. No, 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 no. <laughs> Knowing at least kind of vaguely the stigma homosexuality has in Japan mm. and like the, the 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 culture surrounding that that thereafter, I was so worried that there was gonna be like that something terrible was gonna happen to Yuri, because like oh it's fun it's a light little skater anime, but knowing the sentimentality around homosexuality and LGBT people in Japan, I was I was very much concerned that there was going to be this character, whether it be another competitor or, like, a fan, no, a fan, uh, someone who watches figure skating just, like, come up and accost or attack Yuri. Not to, like, the point of, like, beaten to a pulp, but very much in solidify... The, the sentiment of See, it's interesting. Hom- homophobia. It's interesting that you say that, because one, I don't think homophobic hate crimes like that are typically what you see in Japan. It's usually, that it's not normally what you would, you know, it's not like America. It, you see it more in like, um... Europe and the US? You see it more of like, your kind can't eat here kind of stuff. Okay. But two, it's funny that you say that because I was thinking the same thing for Victor because of Russia. Oh yes, that too. Yeah, like I, the, every every time that they, they were like, "Victor's gonna go back to Russia," I was like, "This is it. He's gonna get beat up." Yeah, in I, my it, head, I was like, "Oh no, it's happening." It was either him or Victor or Yuri, and yeah, Japan isn't. Go ahead. And I'm really glad they didn't. But it was just, I mean, with the history that. Russia and Japan both have mm-hmm. with homosexuality it I gotta admit this this anime did a very good job of breaking the barrier mm-hmm. to a lot of things that are taboo in Japanese anime and we were talking about it too about the even the weight size yeah. like because in Japan it's a very it's very ta- don't ask don't tell no, but I'm also talking about weight. It's How very taboo. Was, it was yeah. chunky. For, sorry, yeah. For them to to be heavy set, and they for the law, if you're overweight to a certain point, you get taxed more under that law. So I mean, seeing it like that, it's interesting to see that they actually drew Yuri in a heavy set form, and it mm. wasn't like a we're gonna draw him Mocking for these him. couple. Not even just mocking him, because it is sort of mocking him. Because the whole time he's he oh. while he's overweight, they're they're pointing it out and they're they're not necessarily mocking him, mocking him, but they're making sure to point it out. I think what we, I think what they mean by mocking is uh, typically in anime you see the overly overly port, portly character, and that's their whole thing. Yeah, they, they never get well. Fat gum's a whole different thing they either stay fat the entire time or their whole goal of being fat is become skinny so the fact that they allowed him to just exist in that moment as a chunky person it they they were doing the thing they were not doing the thing yeah they tease him about it but it's not like a it's not malicious and b it's they're not making a joke out of him yes that's what i that but, but what i was trying to say is that they didn't stop at we're gonna show that he's a little chunky when he arrives to japan and then all of a sudden he looks 
the normal size that he used to mm-hmm. look like. They stuck to the fact that he looked overweight until he worked that weight off. Right. They they make a point of it mm-hmm. when Victor agrees to become his coach. He's like, yeah, I, even, I, I get that you're, you're, this is your favorite food and it's your comfort food and you've been through a bit, uh, but you're not touching the ice until you lose some weight because you can't compete at this weight. It, mm-hmm. You just won't do well. And the, um, the, the video that goes viral of him uh, on, on the, I keep calling it dancing, uh, ice skating, they, in the animation, they made a conscious effort to allow him to keep that weight mm-hmm. while skating. And that seems like a really dumb thing, but it would have been much easier for them to animate that, animate him in a way that they were familiar with mm-hmm. and not worry about his, um, his... Oversize. His, yeah, that you could, you could just be, you could almost call it a trick of the eye you saw him chunky before so obviously he's chunky now let's just not talk about the fact that he's not um yeah but everything from their uh the choice of outfit they put him in Mm -hmm. to like the width of his torso Mm -hmm. yes it's because obviously there's gonna be a little like he's gonna look thinner in certain um movements movements because it's figure skating you're designed to look the movements themselves are designed to be elongated and um and angular very similar to ballet in that sense but the the boy still has some some heft to him like his his hips and thighs and his torso very much give the impression of he's still heavy yes as opposed to later in the series when you see him like competitive and warming up He's wearing like a sports jacket, and you can see how thin he's become. He's still not the thinnest dancer by any means. I would say that's probably Yurio, but um, but again, Yurio's fifteen. Yurio's fifteen and, and hasn't hit puberty. He's fifteen, hasn't hit puberty, and is constantly in motion. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, he did a good job of. And, I, I I like again. I like this anime because not just because of the fluff. Because you guys know, I love the fluff. I love the. I love a good love story. I'm a sucker for love. But I really enjoyed, like, I didn't know a lot of the history behind the animation, which I'm glad that you told me. Mm-hmm. But that made me love this anime more because you get to see these animators really try to push the boundaries of what is normal and japan and what's taboo and they said oh you think this is taboo let me put it in your face and watch what happens Mm -hmm. and you know there's a particular scene when victor and yuri kiss and it's been debated that no they didn't kiss it's just a hug guys it's a kiss but the fact that they have a censored and uncensored version yeah so if you watch it on crunchyroll or on fundimation they did censor that one particular scene to make it look almost like a hug because of the tabooness of homosexuality in Japan. That as well as it was probably mostly the homosexuality, but there's also a uh, connotation with PDA that is worthy of being noted. Mm. Even people who are married don't normally kiss. Yeah, and I think that's a lot of the Asian community, um, Asian culture, because, I mean, you see it even in, like, um, Korean dramas and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. The PDA is mostly at holding hands. Yeah. You really don't see, like, kisses or anything like that. You don't see any PDA. And the fact that they do show that in the uncensored DVD version, it's really nice to have that because... It means the animators were trying to push the boundaries and they, they also did respect that they're like, it's a cultural no-no. We're going to try to not push push because we don't want to get canceled. Mm-hmm. But here's a nice little, and we'll give it to you in the if you pay a little extra sort of deal. Yeah. So moving away a little bit from uh, real world stuff, let's dive back into the show like for real real for a hot second. <laughs> Um, hey, Myra, you watched the show in the dub. What big changes do we have to look forward to when going from the original uh, Japanese to the uh, English? So, 
<laughs> like <laughs> major <laughs> changes uh, as far as Yuri and Victor goes. There's nothing really. They they kept their relationship pretty much the same. Obviously, there's some words that are lost in translation that mm-hmm. happens with any culture. Uh, yeah, any translation. Yeah. Any translation. Now we're going to the other characters. <laughs> okay. So, first of all, I just want to say, whoever they had to voice act for Yurio and Yuri, oh, or Yurio bad? and Victor. Mm-hmm. Did they Could overdo they, the Russian accent? They overdid the Russian accent <laughs> so... Okay, so Yurio... For Yurio, they overdid the Russian accent so bad. Mm-hmm. For Victor, they tried to do the Russian accent and it almost sounded Swedish. Swedish? Yeah. And I was like, that's oh not Russian. God, that, that reminds me of Italia back in the day. That's bad. The, but, I mean, you could tell they were trying, but Vic, Yurio's accent... Like, I don't know if it was because half the time the kid is fucking yelling, going, I want that! And you're a loser! And trying to do these... Oh, what? He does yell that to Vic, not to Yuri. At multiple points. It just sounds weird. And calls him an idiot. At multiple points. I know. So, it's... I don't know if it was because half the time fucking Yuri was screaming. So, if the... The accent just came out weird. But, yeah, the accents, especially for the other guys. Like, you had the the Span, uh, the Swedish guy who just straight up sounded American. Or was... No, he didn't sound American. He did sound a little bit Swedish. He almost sounded like Victor's accent, which I was like... That's why I was like, mm, are you guys from the same place? Yeah. But, and then you have the Italians... Oh my, the this Italians. This is you the... know. Can I can I tangent real quick? Yes. The everyone who was into homes, uh, Italia. Fuck. Everyone who was into Italia when it was initially like dubbed was hoping to God they didn't do the multiple accents thing, and then they did. And you know what? I just hoped that they had learned. You know what? They didn't do bad with the Italian, like the other country accents. What I have an issue with the Italians is they straight up changed their plot line. <laughs> well, oh, I forgot about that. How do we go from a brother and sister who almost have a feel like they have a sexual relationship to a brother to a girlfriend and boyfriend who literally have a sexual relationship? That's called we didn't want to talk about it. Yeah, it got real awkward there. We were watching, we watched this anime together. We watched mm-hmm. this anime together for the first time. Um, Fun experience. It was great. And we're watching that fucking episode, and Myra goes, wait, out loud. And me and Sam just both look at her. Like, and what? <laughs> and she goes, they're what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm I was so- not ready. Because, again, I... I've watched this three years ago, and last I checked, stop scratching. I'm sorry. Now you're making me itchy. Stop it. Um, I do remember their relationship, and it, it, they don't outright say they're dating, Mm -hmm. but they don't also outright say they're siblings. They do say that they've known each other and have been skating together for many 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 years and obviously they're siblings so they've been skating since they were young but the jealousy and the overprotectiveness and the outright sexual tension that is between both of them it's it's fucking uncomfortable they literally have a breakup scene they do he narrates their breakup scene during his performance and she gets it. I would have had to deduct points as a judge for incest vibes. <laughs> I would have had to. And his sister starts crying in the stands, and her friend's like, you good? And she's like, <laughs> I lost him. And you're like, what? Her friends are like, what? You? he's right there. Girl, you good? Yeah, it, it got a little... So figuring out that the they... They um, muffled or subdued that. I would say curved. changed. Yeah, curved that that 
little bit of detail from us. Part of me is sort of glad they did, and part of me is not, because I would have liked to know the truth. You've been deceived by the American people. I've been You've deceived, lied to. yes. Um, <laughs> but I'm not... I'm not going to say that a lot of other things... I mean, the accents could have been better, mm. but they weren't atrocious. There's one other thing. This isn't from the dub. This is from the sub, so the original Japanese that really screwed with me, and I would love to know who made this decision. The entire show we're watching, like, sort of live as it happens, and there are a good couple of moments where we're watching a, a news reporter be like, hey, what's up? I'm, I'm so-and-so from a news station, and I'm telling you about this ice so-and-so. skating thing. And then out of nowhere. Because it is, it is worldwide. We're watching every, you know, every all of the other countries do their stuff. And then out of fucking nowhere, last episode... They just decided to put a French dude in there. <laughs> just out of the blue. <laughs> it's just like, you move over home. It's a little And I'm it's, like, it's hysterical. What? <laughs> it's hysterical because they're in Spain during that scene, too. They're not even in France. They're just in Spain, vibing. I thought they were in China. No, they were in Spain. No. I don't know where they are. Because it's when geography. <laughs> <laughs> it's when Yuri's like, I want to get a good luck charm. Gets oh, right. engagement right. rings. Yep. Yes. And he's all like, this... "Let me just propose to you under the Catholic Church." <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I okay. I love how their entire relationship is Yuri kind of like taking this like awkward shuffle step forward, and Victor going, "Gee, this kind of feels like a a, a marriage proposal." <laughs> no, no, no. What it is is uh, Victor takes this massive step forward, and then Vic- and then uh, Yuri goes, <laughs> "I mean." And then he, he he catches up. He's like, I mean, I guess it's okay. And then he kind of stands there for a second awkwardly at the, like the similar point with with uh, Victor, and then just goes one step further <laughs> and looks back at Victor like, okay. And Victor goes, ah, yes. Ah. <laughs> no, I. But I I agree with you on that whole changing the weird Bug. language. But I you know. Uh, what made it weird for me hmm. is we've been traveling around the world talking to people from different cu- countries and different things and all of a sudden out of fucking nowhere french french, french. motherfucker the, the, exactly it was it's unexpected boring. yeah because we have the the russian reporter and they don't even speak russian mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like okay i know a little like a good bit of japanese do I still read the subtitles? Yes, but I do that in English, too. When you know a good bit of a language that's coming through your ears, and then all of a sudden, coin flip, we have gone into unfamiliar territory, when you thought you were safe, <laughs> it's a weird fucking feeling. It's, it's like if mid-sentence I was talking to you in English and just suddenly decided to be Russian, right here, right now, full stop. I can't because I only know four words in Russian, but still. Yeah, it was definitely a um, weird twist that they took. That they went, ah, now we're speaking French. Parlez-vous français? Yeah, it was very much a weird vibe. I, it um, broke the submersion. And it so did. Had they been doing it from day zero, it would not have. But yeah, because... because it, yeah. yeah. All of us went... French? 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 Yeah, because at that point... I, I mean, we pretty much bench-watched it. So, going from everything is Japanese with occasional... Uh, Spinach. Or whatever the word is. It, what, what the is occasional it? English... No, they would say English, but they they also threw language... Uh, A little bit words, of Russian. A little bit of Russian. No, they threw in words from everybody's different cultures. Like, you would have, like, an Italian be like, Arrivederci, or... The occasional, like, uh, exclamation type word Mm -hmm. in in their their native language. Yeah, and, um, sorry, brain fart, dead. My brain (laughs) just went... Dead. Shutting down. I'm shutting down now. Yeah. Clear screen. Um, Exactly. Um, but so you went from, you know, going 
random. What's the fucking? How do you say goodbye? Which one? Ciao. No, and Avida Zing. No. Nope. Russian. Oh God. Um. I'm trying to think of it because I want to say. Okay, it. Google. <laughs> how do you say goodbye in Russian? Avida Stanya. Dasvidanya. 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 Like all of a sudden you like hearing like occasionally Victor say that or Yuri or uh, Yurio or having like um because the Italians have their own little esperter words that Expletive. they thank you mm-hmm. I, the Swedish guy does too so all of them having these little hints that they speak other languages is really nice but then like you have JJ who goes JJ style yeah so it so. Dumb. Hell yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> but then you all of a sudden, for like 30 seconds, just go full on French. And Victor out of nowhere speaks French and you're like, okay, that I'm not surprised by. Yeah, but Victor, Victor, speak? Victor strikes me as the dude who just casually sat down and learned as many languages as possible to impress someone in, in like middle school. Like, not, but see, like, I understand him speaking different languages because he is a renowned world known figure skater Mm -hmm. so he obviously would have to speak other languages when he competes in other locations Mm -hmm. the thing that throws you off is in the entire show you haven't heard him speak another language besides a one or two words in russian Uh and japanese yeah i guess see part of me wishes they would have just stuck with just japanese if they were going to do it like that Mm -hmm. it seems very half-assed to only kind of throw that shit in at the end. Because I feel like it would probably push their budgets to the limits to get specifically Russian speaking people and specifically you know, to grab all these people from other corners of the world that know how to speak the languages they would need and want a speaking role in an anime. The 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 cost was probably getting to them after how much money they dumped into the animation. Yeah. And you can you can tell like I guess what I'm saying is if they didn't have the budget to do that, they should have just committed to just Japanese. <laughs> or even if it, if you wanted to show that he was not speaking to a Japanese reporter, but specifically a Ch- French reporter, you could have said, um, uh, you could have started with a bonjour and then Japanese and then ended it with a au revoir. Yeah, mm-hmm. something. You could have gone just about as um, high qual as you did for literally every other non-Japanese speaker. Exactly. Like, <laughs> you you introduce them with a ciao yeah. or a hola. Hello in their native language and then goodbye or, like, a mm-hmm. sign off in their native language. Yeah. On a completely different note, I would just like to, um, if if it is agreeable, I would like to slide into the fandom Ooh, on this yes. part. Yes, yes, yes. Um, because it's really interesting. This is one of the first fandoms in a long time that I've seen has stretched as far as it has, um, there are fans in this fandom from all over the world. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are in the figure skating realm. Mm. Uh, there are so many renditions of people skating the to- sets oh, yeah. Yeah. From, the, from the anime on, on YouTube and stuff. And it's like, y'all got dedication. I mean, you have... It, it, talking about the fandom mm-hmm. uh we talked about how one of the figure skaters was shown in the show mm-hmm. she um she's a renowned figure skater you know mm-hmm. she's worldwide known whatever um but the fact that she watched the she didn't know she had a part in the anime mm-hmm. she watched the anime and was like oh oh, oh? And then she went, she's actually the reason Johnny Weird found out that he was in the, like, his, they had throwbacks to him. Oh. It's because she's like, Johnny, you have to watch this anime. Beach. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Bitch. You gotta watch this anime. He goes and watches it and she's like, that looks like your flower crown. That looks like your black outfit. And, you know, you have all these, they, they literally. Little tidbits. They literally went. Bitch, we're in this anime. Okay, but we could skate that, though. <laughs> yeah. And I, it's very interesting because, especially with Johnny Weird, he is um, in the LGBT... Uh, I can never say it right. LGBTQ? LGBTQ community. 
Um, so it's very interesting for him to see it also in that point of aspect. Um, and for all these, I mean, this fandom is feral. Oh, yeah. It's very feral. Yeah. There's... But it, there's a lot of wholesome and some not so wholesome. Okay, for, for as feral as this fandom is, and I actually had time to go into it a little bit, there's a lot more wholesome content they're feral in the way that bunnies are when they're outside. Yeah. But, yes. Yeah, they're feral, but that feral does not mean um, violent and, you know, Gross. toxic all the time. It just means not domesticated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the amount of, like, AUs where they're just like, yeah, they're married, and also Yurio's their son. I love and... those. Oh, my God. God, that's like my favorite. I'm kind of getting tired of the found family trope where the younger one just gets stuck with the older ones as parents. <laughs> or like they just have a daughter and it's just real wholesome. Oh, you and... haven't seen the one where they have the two little boys? Oh, Listen, you know, insert married Victor and Yuri with any number of children. <gasps> go, go, go. But they also really like their mafia AU. Like, a lot. Oh, yeah, they do. Uh, like, if it's not a wholesome found family pick, it's Mafia AU. And... They have a lot of very... There's a lot. There's... You're gonna oh, share wait. with the class. My hero, Yuri Damia. Stop it. <gasps> Stop it. Stop it! I can't unsee it. It's so accurate, though. I don't like it. You looked for it. I wanted to see if they had quirks. That was loud. I'm sorry. Okay. Again, back to the fandom. I mean, there's a lot of crossovers, too, with this fandom. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere. And, I mean, they, like I said, they like I said before, they've made a literal appearance in Steven Universe. Hmm. Which that's a crossover in genres completely. Yeah, that's Steven Universe is good at those though. Yes, they are. Um, but except for the one time they weren't. What time? Whatever, Grandpa, Uncle Grandpa. That episode wasn't canon, and we don't talk about it. Okay, it like actually wasn't canon. They I... did it because Cartoon Network told them to. That's fair. <laughs> um, but we're your network. Do this. We don't want to. Do it. Eh, fun fact: We didn't ask. And Rebecca Sugar went. Literally, how am I supposed to fucking do this during an episodic portion of my show? And Cartoon Network went. Figure it out. Do you want a budget? She went. I guess. <laughs> if I must. Anyway. Um, but the, yeah. Yeah. No, sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah, the fandom for the show is um, so big. Um, the granted, like the the amount of fix that I saw, they're not like breaking records or anything. I think um, they didn't uh, break into the top five for Ao three or anything like that, but um, they did have well over a thousand pages of uh, potential. Let's see real quick. All fandoms. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't break into the top uh, five on Ao3, but they do have. As soon as it loads. Uh, they have thirty-eight thousand six hundred and fifty-two fix right now, which um, is a lot. <laughs> Again, not as much as the big five, but still. Um, it's a damn good amount, and I did peruse through them for a little bit just to see. Uh, most of it's fluff. Oh, y'all got a sweet tooth. I'm not mad about it. The uh, it, like all this shit I have on the, on it. it. I mean, you guys have seen the art I have on Yuri on Ice that I was showing you before. I, you guys <laughs> had the chance to even show. Me. I was like, oh look how cute they are. I mean, I've I've been on the fringes of this fandom because again. The, the show itself is something, like, up my alley. Uh -huh. I just, I didn't want to, if it was a queer baiting thing, I didn't want to fall into the pitfall. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to get, you know, tricked. 
but we've all been there. Yeah, but it it is it it was definitely up my alley, and it's I don't know. Phantom's good. I didn't I didn't find anything necessarily like I bad mean, about it. I have seen some where are they're a little R rated. That's that's a but given that's, though. That's common. Yeah, I mean that's the, but it's not anything where I would go. Well, okay. So I did some perusing. No, 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 no. Let me finish. Grab your card. You didn't have your card. So I was going to counter. It's nothing I would say as bad as some other things I've seen. It still still can get bad. Well. But I think that's the same with anything. It can get bad. That's fair. Um. But most of the stuff that I've seen is very much the fluff. It's very much... The dog. The, oh, God, God, the dog. Everyone would die for this goddamn dog. And I would, I, too. I would die for this dog. I'd die I, for I this dog. I, would die for this goddamn dog. But, Did, like, literally... Any chance they have to bring up the dog, they're like, the dog is safe and well and deeply loved. Dude, the... the <laughs> In case I mean, you were curious. Just the one episode when the dog gets sick... We were all like, but the dog. Wait, like, wait, 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 the dog. <laughs> but wait, we don't care if Yuri wins or loses this competition. What happened to the dog? The fact that Yuri was like, you have to go home in case he dies, because I wasn't there for when my dog died, and you need to go, Victor. Okay, back to the fandom. Anyway, yes. as cute uh, as that dog is, back to the fandom. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. There's, there's going to be a weird portion session. of the internet that's going to do the thing. But I guess the the reason I bring I didn't bring it up necessarily is because I'm impressed at how little of that Yuri on Ice has yeah. in yes. comparison to other animes, especially in comparison to other animes. Mm-hmm. Look, Japan is known for their ludes, all right? I get yes, it. Yes, they are. It's one of the reasons it's the one thing I talk about whenever we talk about the fandoms I make sure to mention, because if it's, if, if, the, if, and if like one artist in Japan goes, I like this. I'm going to draw it. A bunch of people will go, oh, wow, same. And now you just have a cesspool that is, like, there and attached to that fandom no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. Don't look up Earth. Don't look up Earth. Earth? Earth. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to continue with my fluff and Yuri and Victor going shopping to Starbucks, okay? Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's, I, I would, personally, I would give this fandom, like, an A. It's, I really don't, I don't have a negative thing to say. I've not heard any drama from them. No. They just want to see the gay boys skate. They want oh to see God, the they, gay, they want to see the gay boys skate, and they want them to adopt Yurio so bad. Yeah. <laughs> they want, they want to see that, and then they also want more content, but like, yes. uh, everyone does. I Every, get it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> can, you this can movie, sit. this movie can't come out soon enough, so. Okay. So now, with further to do, after we discuss this very fluffy fandom. Without further ado, you knew what I meant. <laughs> you said my... with further to do, <laughs> and that means we have more to do. My brain right now is going. I know. I'm sorry. Oxygen I'm tired. Oxygen deprived sleep mood. I mean, we can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. We gave the fandom an A, mm-hmm. and I guess I will start the vote. Mm-hmm. As we know, uh, y'all, <laughs> y'all listening out there beautiful listeners that we have as of right now i think we only have like 12 but you 12 beautiful people who are listening if you haven't seen yuri on ice please please take the day and a half day and a half no, it wasn't even. It isn't even a day and a half. It's a we day. We started late. Yeah, yeah we, we started it in twenty four hours. Yeah, we could have benched it in less than twenty four hours. We just started at like at eleven o'clock at night and then ended up finishing like at three the next day. So less than twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. Um, take those couple of hours. We're gonna say it's about twelve episodes, twenty six minutes, twenty four minutes. So. Say 25 for easy. 25. Um, so, it's about an hour for each, for two episodes. So, six hours-ish. 
Yeah, so about six hours. Take the six hours of your day. Sorry, I was tuning up enough. <laughs> you're good. No, I you're good. You're good. Slowly loading. Yeah. Um, take the six hours of your day. Take the time. And watch this beautiful anime. It has everything. It has drama. It has fluff. It has intense sitting at the edge of your seat thinking he's going to lose or he's going to win. Or he slams his face into a fucking wall. It has it has something for the gays. It has something for the straights. It has Does it, though? It has JJ. I'm only giving him that, and that's <laughs> it. JJ. Hey, straights, come watch this show. We've got a JJ for you. <laughs> I'm giving them JJ, and that's they it. They can have him. They can have him. They can have him, because we have Yuri, and Yurio, and Victor, and... Literally everyone else. Everyone else, and... The rest of the cast. And the rest of the cast. Homosexual supporting cast who? <laughs> More it, like cishet supporting cast JJ. <laughs> it's it's a fun, it's enjoyable. And if you are the kind of pe- person that enjoys a good freaking song and music, this oh anime God. has it for you. So I say go watch it. Like now. Like after you're done listening to this episode, go watch it. That's my take. Yes. So, so I'll start next. Um, you know, I haven't latched on to anything quite so quickly in a hot minute. Just wait. Uh, and um, I gotta say, the vibes are good in this here fandom. I am impressed. I really like the show it's beautiful to watch because like granted there are a little awkward moments when y- the budget was getting stretched thin but like the color schemes the 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 movements the the choreography uh, and it's just it's so gay guys it's just so gay i love it it's just pure I. It might be a new comfort anime. We'll we'll find out. You know, <laughs> like I, it's. Yes, just please go watch it. I. You know, I think this might be one of my more incoherent summaries. Don't don't smirk at me like that. <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. It's just real good. <laughs> Jay. It's good. Go watch it. <laughs> That's it? Y'all have been talking about how good it is, and I agree. I have nothing else to add. <laughs> but no, seriously. Like, I I held off watching the show for dumb reasons that obviously weren't warranted. Um, if If you like modern sports animes, and you also would like to see... Jesus Christ, I heard that. Um, and you would like to see um, some good, good representation in some media, um, especially considering coming from Japan, I would highly recommend. And even if you're just here for a good time, watch it. It's great. I I could not sing Higher Graces. It Granted, for me, it moved a little slow at times, and I'm not a huge fan of this, like the slowly building romantic stuff but despite that it did not hinder the story and if anything it pushed it forward and I find that commendable that they didn't have the romance take away from the main mm-hmm. stage so I say watch it it was, it was good all around yep yeah it's yeah so it's three yeses around go watch it once you're done with this episode of course don't wait till it's done all right so, um, with further to do, <laughs> further to say, without nothing further for, ado, you knew my brain is going to bed. I'm sorry, no, my Myra, low, to bed. low power mode. I think I am, like <laughs> legit. <laughs> slowly turning into Baymax. Um, uh, hey, baby. <laughs> without further ado. Without further to do, <laughs> it's fine. Do it. 
I can't even. Without. I was gonna say the socials. Oh, oh shit! The thing. Myra, good brain. Smart, smart girl. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If you want more content or want to see some of the stuff we reference in the show or just want to say hi, please follow us on WSIWT Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. Our TikTok is Why Should I Watch That? All one word. And so is our Facebook. Why Should I Watch That? All one word. Um, we're also... We also got a YouTube channel where you can listen to our episodes and also watch our live shows, which we only have one at the current time, but we no, will we have nine. No, one live show. Oh. I thought you were saying we only had one episode up on the YouTube. No, we have nine episodes on YouTube, which will be start getting more updates of more episodes. We have one live show and hopefully we will do more soon. All right, guys, without further ado, We've had our snacks. We've said our facts. We've told you if you should watch that. Have a good night. See you later. Don't deprive your brain of sleep. Bye! Go to bed! This month's theme is anime. Please listen closely to the clip of the theme song following to try and guess what next week's topic is.